Hi everyone, I welcome you all to the detailed course on Microsoft Project. So this is the very first video in the tutorial series of MSP. Here we will not be touching the technical aspects of this particular software. Instead, we will just be understanding the basic user interface, then what are the functions and features that are available in this particular software, then what MSP is all about, what all you can do using this particular software and most importantly what will be the outline of this particular course okay so without any delay let us get started so what microsoft project is all about see this is nothing but a construction management software or i would say a project management software to be very precise so this particular software can be used to track the progress of your project on a day-to-day -day basis or on a periodic basis, I would say. You can check on the schedule as well as cost of your project by updating it regularly, okay? So what you can see is whether your project is performing under budget or it is over budgeted in terms of cost. Similarly, in terms of schedule, you can check whether it is ahead of schedule or it is behind schedule and you can take some corrective or preventive measures on time. Okay. Similarly, there is one feature here which is available which is called as earned value management. Through that particular feature, you can calculate several parameters and indicators related to your project like cost performance indices you can calculate. Similarly, schedule performance indices. These parameters can help you to assess the health of your project. Okay. Then you can create several reports like in like you can create some cost reports, your uh, resource overview reports, then your resource over allocation reports and so on. So these reports you can print and you can present to your boss and he can get an idea through those reports that how your project is uh, performing in aggregate. Okay, so now the very first video after the introduction will be on the creation of this particular project. So I have taken this IT building construction project as a practical project in this particular whole series. So see, every project that you execute will be just like this, like it will have civil works, it will have finishes, MEP works, handover and completion. So whatever project you execute at site, if you uh, execute this particular project in MSP, you will be able to relate any project that you do in the construction business, okay? Then uh, this particular project will be creating, then inside these particular projects, we'll be creating this work breakdown structures like civil works, finishes and all. And inside these, we will be having certain set of activities like site clearance, excavation and all. For finishing, we will have finishes activities. MV works will have plumbing and electrical then handover and project completion. So in the task menu, if you see in the insert section, then several options are available like summary, milestone, task. So through these options, you can add these particular activities. So in the video itself, we'll be understanding how to do this. What is a summary task? What is a milestone? In detail, we will be understanding in the video. But for the time being, you should know that from here, you can add your task, summary task and milestones. Okay, so after we are done with this particular video on creation of the activities, then your milestones and all, you will be assigning the relationships. See what happens is every activity is related to some or the other activity in a certain way. Like foundation can only start after you are done with the excavation. Column casting can only start after you are done with the foundation. So this is nothing but a relationship. Like certain activities will have predecessors and your successors. Like if you see, this is a chart called as Gantt chart, which represents the complete project in terms of bars. So these arrows that you see here, these arrows will only be visible once you assign the predecessors and successors to your activities. So there will be several methods to assign the predecessors and successors, like three to four methods we'll be discovering and will be showing. So if you go to this detailed view here, then you will be able to see in the predecessor, like if I open some activity like site clearance or let us say excavation, then there are several types of uh, relationships that are existing like finish to finish, finish to start, start to finish and start to start. So we will be understanding each type of relationship and then we will be assigning them also. Like if you see in the predecessor section here, then finish to start, finish to finish, what is lag, what is lead, everything will be understanding in detail. So after that, we will be creating something called as WBS codes. What is WBS? It is nothing but a work breakdown structure. So every activity or every work package should have a unique WBS code so that you can represent that particular activity or that particular summary task using that particular code instead of writing the task name every time. Okay. So after we are done with creation of the WBS code, we will be moving to creation of the calendars. So what is calendar C? 
every project site depending on the location depending on the country and all has certain timings like some sites can start at 8 am in the morning and at and at 7 pm in the evening there might be one hour break then certain public holidays might be there like christmas holiday or new year holiday or any festival holidays might be observed so for your particular project you should define a customized calendar based on the requirements so in the project if you see in the change working time we have created our own calendar called as it building calendar so we will be creating this calendar like we'll be adding the exceptions also like public holidays then we will be adjusting the work weeks like some elections are there this is an exception that we are adding then we will be changing the timings also like on monday if you see 6 a.m to 4 p.m or Tuesday, you see 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. on election days, it is happening. Similarly, if you go to default, if you see the normal timings of the site, then on Monday, you can see 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., then 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. is there, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. is the lunch break. So everything we will be adjusting in the creation of calendars. So after we are done with creating our own calendar, it will be the time to assign this particular calendar to our project through this project information tab. You can see in this calendar, we have assigned this calendar to our project. Similarly, you can assign some customized calendar to your task also. Like suppose there is some particular vendor for let us say plastering works. He cannot come on Saturday and Sunday anyhow, irrespective of when your project is running. Okay. So you will have to create one separate calendar for plastering activity and then you will have to assign that particular calendar to plaster. Okay. So this all we will be understanding in uh, assigning the calendar video. After this particular video, we will be assigning some constraints. In the task menu, if you go to the detailed option, then here you will be able to see several constraints. What happens is based on the client requirements, like suppose the client wants you to do some particular task before a certain date or you, the client wants you to hand over the complete building before a certain date, then you will have to assign some constraints. So every constraint we will be understanding practically, we will be assigning every constraint to certain activities and we will be understanding the concept of constraints in detail. Detail. After that, we will be moving to our resources, which is the most important part. If you open the resource sheet, see several built in views are available in MSP like resource usage, task usage. These views also we will be discovering later in the video. So, moving to the resources, see we have created several resources, like several staff resources will be created your project manager, construction manager, then your several class of engineers. Okay, so these are the staff resources that we will be creating. Then moving on to the labor resources like masons, helpers, block work mason, carpenter, plumbers, electricians, and so on. Then we will move to material resources like your plain cement concrete, plaster, RCC, sanitary fixtures, flooring, aluminum foam work, woodwork. Then we will move to plant and machinery like excavator, concrete pump, dumpers, and so on. We will be understanding all types of resources available like work resources, material resources, then one other type of resources also available, which is called as the cost resources. Then we will understand how to assign the units to our material resources, how to create the initials, how to group them, how to assign the maximum units. This units percentage is nothing but the number of resources. Like 100% shows that one engineer will be available at max. Then your standard rate, how to put the standard rate for your resources, overtime rates, then cost per use. If you see for our P and M resources, we have certain cost per use. Every time this use resource will be used, we will incur some particular uh, cost. Then we will understand about the accrual of the uh, resources like prorated, start, end, then base calendar related to these resources and so on. So after we are done with creating the resources, now it will be the time to understand one very important concept, which is called as the task type in MSP. See, if I open the detailed view, then you will be able to see three types of tasks are available. Fixed duration, fixed units and fixed work. So to explain you better, I will create one uh, separate project in MSP with three activities of three different task types, fixed duration, fixed units and fixed work. I will be assigning some dummy resources here. I will be changing the units arbitrarily. I'll be deleting the resources and I'll be showing you how the task type is highly related to the assignment of resources. Okay. So after we understand the type of task, then we will move to assigning the resources. Since we are thorough with the type of task, then we will assign these resources. If you see these resource names, then I have assigned all these resources. So there will be three to four methods through which we can assign the resources. For example, if you see this particular activity, which is your, let us say brickwork, then brickwork has 
टू ब्लॉक वर्क मेसन वन इंजीनियर कोर एंड वन ब्रिक वर्क मटीरियल विच इज हंड्रेड क्यूबिक मीटर इज असाइन सो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग सिमिलरली इफ यू सी वन प्लम्बिंग एक्टिविटी then it has one plumber one mep helper one engineer pipe and material resource as sanitary fixtures and in the detailed view if you see if you go to the resource tab here uh this resource and predecessor then i'll assign some certain units also i'll assign some work also we'll be understanding everything in detail related to the resources so after this one more video will be on effort driven scheduling so there is one important concept in msp related to effort driven scheduling we will understand that also see after you will assign the resources you will see something called as over allocation here might be possible that your resources are not available in a certain number but they are required in the project as per use as per your schedule suppose uh, let us say some certain resource like let us say mason only two masons are available but as per your schedule three masons will be required so this is called as over allocation so we will be understanding about the over allocation through one very simple example i'll be showing you using this example then we will be executing the over allocation and we'll be resolving the over allocation in our microsoft project window okay to resolve the over allocation we will be understanding about the uh replacement of resources if you go to the resource tab in the assign resources you can see there is an option called as replace so you can replace your resources to avoid over allocation similarly another method to avoid over allocation or minimize over allocation is leveling of the resources so there will be very detailed video on leveling of the resources either we will be leveling all the resources or we will be leveling some certain resources then several options related to leveling we will understand each and every option here how to clear the leveling and all also we will understand okay then after that we will move to uh, creating and assigning of the baselines if you go to the project then there is an option called as setting the baseline so you can set a baseline for the entire project or for some selected task so this is the first step to updating the progress you have to first of all assign the baseline these great lines that you are seeing here these are the baselines so how to assign the baseline that will be understand in that particular video after we assign the baseline then it is the time to update the progress of our project if you see here if i add some certain uh, let us say percentage complete column then you will be able to see that i have updated some percentages related to the activities like these activities 100% complete this is also 100% but this is 33% complete so this we will understand in the video related to progress update in that uh, option of uh, project tab you can see that we have to first set the status date then we have to update the project from here either you can go here and you can update the status of your activity from here also similarly a uh, mark on track feature is available where you can update the task that what is the percentage completion what is the remaining duration and so on after we are done with this now it is the time to generate our earned value management indicators if you go to this view tab then in the option of tables here if you go to more tables then one by default earned value table will be displayed to you where you can see several types of indicators related to evm will be shown like planned value earned value actual cost schedule variance cost variance spi cpi so we will understand everything theoretically also i have created one presentation where you can understand everything in theory like what is evm what is pv what is ev what is ac everything we will understand then we will execute that in the microsoft project window and we will understand how these numbers have been calculated and what is the significance of every number practically after this we will understand one important concept related to evm which is called as percentage complete and physical percentage complete so i will be taking one dummy example to help you understand this particular feature of evm after this we will be moving to some uh, i would not say very important concept but some little bit important concept related to highlight feature filtering grouping suppose you want to uh, highlight some uh, particular activities like critical activities or the activities which are late activities and so on so you can use these particular features we'll be understanding everything in the detail then after that we will be moving on to the views that are available in msp so several views like calendar view gantt chart view network diagram view resource sheet usage form all these views we will be understanding one by one and what is the significance of every view and how you can use uh, any particular view as per your requirements 
after that we will be moving to reporting and printing so if you go to the reports section in your msp then you can see several types of reports you can create like resource reports over allocated resources resource overview similarly cost reports like cash flow cost overruns earned value report then in progress reports where you can show critical task late task milestones and slippages then some dashboard reports like burn down what is burn down what is cost overview all these reports we'll be creating and we'll be printing also after that towards the end we will be exporting and importing our project if you go to this file menu then you can see there is an option called as new from excel workbook this option can be used to import any excel workbook file to msp so we will be taking one example and i'll be showing you how to import from excel to msp similarly export option and save as option are available these two options can be used to export your project into several formats like what all formats are available i'll show you See, you can export your MS project file into PDF, into XPS, into Excel, into CSV format and so on. So we will be understanding that towards the end. Then after we are done with exporting and importing, then we will be learning uh, the complete summary of this Microsoft project through one assignment. So I'll be showing you one assignment project which will be consisting of certain activities, certain resources like this particular project only. We'll be creating the complete assignment video and through that you will be summarizing everything and that's all for the complete video series on MSP. So happy learning. All the very best, everyone. Thank you.